migration may have started a lot earlier than that. Dimenisi, Georgia. The mountains and plains of the Caucasus, thousands of miles from the Great Rift Valley, had never produced any fossils of early human ancestors. But then, an astonishing discovery was made. It was a lower jaw, with teeth downward, this way in the ground. So when I started to clean, those front teeth came to light. It became obvious to me that we had found some kind of hominid. But what kind? The jaw seemed to be a primitive form of Homo erectus. But at first, hardly anyone believed it. In 91, when we found this jaw, this was, a lot of scientists were quite skeptical about it. Because it was very hard to imagine Georgia, Caucasus, to be on the map of the human evolution. Since then, Damanisi has been put on the map of human evolution in a big way. The site has turned up a treasure trove of Homo erectus fossils. They've transformed our understanding of who left Africa and when. They showed that the first humans to leave Africa were much more primitive than Turkanaboy. People thought that uh, hominids that left Africa were very tall, like Turkana boy, with big brains, advanced technology, and the Manisi proved the, the opposite. At four and a half feet tall, they were smaller than Turkana boy, with more ape-like shoulders and a simple stone technology. They are much more primitive, they have small brains, and at the same time, they were using very primitive stone tools. The next surprise came when they dated the site. The ancient Dimenisi landscape has been built up layer by layer over millions of years. 1.81 million years ago, massive volcanic eruptions deposited a layer of ash. The fossils sat on top of this ash, so must have been slightly younger around 1.8 million years old. To the vast majority of scientists who believe that all our ancestors evolved in Africa, this was a stunning surprise. How had a small, primitive Homo erectus migrated to the Caucasus almost two million years ago, long before Turkana boy? Scientists now accept that as soon as Homo erectus appeared on the savannas of Africa, they started to leave. Suddenly, with the origin of Homo erectus, we get this shift in body shape, and then boom, they're out of Africa right away. The Georgia fossils proved that Homo erectus left Africa much earlier than previously thought. An even more provocative find shows the migration may have started even earlier. 5,000 miles from Africa, the island of Flores, Indonesia. In 2003, researchers made a discovery so strange, nobody knew what to make of it. They found the bones of a tiny human ancestor, just over three feet tall, even smaller than the Dimenisi fossils. They called this baffling new ancestor Homo floresiensis, and because of its tiny size, nicknamed it the Hobbit. This has created a tremendous amount of grief because we're not really sure what we're seeing here. Uh, the size of the Hobbit brain endocast is roughly 400 cc's. That's barely bigger than the brain of Lucy, the famous bipedal ape from three million years ago. It's not just a small brain and a primitive looking face, but the foot's primitive, the hand's primitive, the leg is primitive. The lower limb is very much like the Lucy skeleton. That was a big surprise. And in the cave where this primitive creature was found, they also uncovered stone tools something Lucy never had. 
People for a long time said, well, you need a big brain to make stone tools. Uh, well, okay, if Homo floresiensis is making stone tools, this creature has a brain the size of an orange. Clearly, that equation's gone. Everything about these creatures is an enigma. Where did they come from, and what were they? Some researchers have argued that Floresiensis is just a dwarfed population of modern people that suffered some kind of disease that caused them to both dwarf and have relatively small brains. But when scientists took a closer look, most saw no evidence of disease. The stone tools and the shape of the face moved the focus to our old friend, Homo erectus. Some researchers think that Homo floresiensis evolved from Homo erectus. But how did they get so small? Something called island dwarfism may be the answer. Isolated on islands with limited food, large mammals sometimes shrink over time. On Flores, there were once pygmy elephants the size of cows. Could the same evolutionary pressure have acted on Homo erectus to produce the hobbit? Or was this mysterious creature descended from an even more primitive ancestor? So perhaps we're sampling a period which is at the very beginning of the Homo lineage. So whatever the hobbit was, perhaps its ancestors were the very first wave of migration out of Africa some unknown creature, part bipedal ape like Lucy, and part Homo erectus. So if that's the case, then what we see in Indonesia makes sense. It's kind of a body that existed before human bodies became more modern. What would push such primitive creatures out of Africa? A key driving force behind the migration was probably a climate shift, which spread grasslands from Africa into Asia. And with the grasses went the game animals. Animals are going to be moving out of Africa, and the hominids will just be keeping pace with those animals. After all, that's their livelihood. Of course, our ancestors didn't know they were leaving Africa. They just followed the animals they depended on, through the Sinai up into the Middle East and beyond. It's often been called an exodus, but it really wasn't like that. When people think of exodus, they think of the Bible, or they think of migration, they think of Europeans coming over here to the New World. It probably wasn't like any historical migration, this dispersal of humans out of Africa. The process was probably very, very slow, much like the spread of any other animal species into new territories. You could imagine a group of Homo erectus moving their range a kilometer a year in one direction, and doing that continually over a long enough period of time, you can get the distance from Africa to Indonesia covered in, say, 15,000 years. By a million years ago, our ancestors had populated Asia from the Caucasus to Indonesia. And they were in Europe, too, as a recent discovery in Spain has shown. 